Hey guys, I'm back with a multi-period work scheduling problem in Python, and I'm excited to do this one because I don't think I've done a multi-period uh, problem yet. So, um, this is again a textbook problem and it has three pages, and I will link the textbook below, and sorry if you hear my dog in the background. Um, but basically, um, we have five different months, and we have a computer service store, and um, there's a certain amount of repair t skilled repair time that is required in these five months. Um, and then the second page, um, so basically this uh, information is important, although it is a lot of information, but just to summarize, um, we have 50 skilled technicians um, at the beginning of January, so the first month, and each skilled technician can work up to 160 hours per month, and we need to train more employees so um, during a month of training, each trainee needs to be supervised for 50 hours by the experienced technician. Um, each experienced technician is paid 2,000 a month, um, and during the month of training, a trainee is paid 1,000 a month. And at the end of each month, 5% of techni experienced technicians will quit, and we want to minimize the labor cost incurred in meeting the service requirements. Um, so basically our decision variable, this is kind of where the uh, multi-period part comes in. Um, we have the five, uh, T is our subscript, and we have the five, di five different periods. Um, I guess I could go ahead and just start that. So we start with our from pulp import asterisk. So I guess we're just going to call our set time. So it's different time periods, one, two, three, four, five. You could also call it the months if you'd like. Um, and then, so next it shows how our um, objective function is going to work out. So, um, oh, actually, we have one more decision variable. Um, um, this one is the number of technicians trained during that month, and then Y is the number of experienced technicians at the beginning of the month. So for our um, objective function, we have both of those variables in there, and the first part of it, we are summing over... Um, the cost of training the uh, trainees each month and then the cost of um, of the skilled uh, sorry the skilled technicians working during um, each month so we're summing all that up and here's just a better like summarized equation and anyway so our first constraint is that the number of available technician hours during a certain month needs to be greater than the required hours during month T. So that's back to this, um, our requirements for the hours. So basically what this means is that we have to take into account that 50 of those hours each month are going to be used um, training someone. So we need to uh, multiply 160, which is the max that the skilled person can work, um, times the number at the beginning of the month, minus um, 50 hours times the number of trainees we have during that month. And um, that needs to be greater than or equal to this these requirements right here. So that's all. Whoops, don't know what I just said. That's all right here. Um, and then we also need to tie these variables together. Um, so on the next, the last page, we need to make sure that the experienced technicians available at the beginning of the month t um, are equal to experienced technicians at beginning of month uh, the month before plus the number of trainees during the month before minus the experienced technicians who quit the month before. So that's why we have our T minus one. So you can see right here at month two, um, the number of experienced technicians available should be equal to the experienced technicians in month one plus the number of trained um, technicians during month one because they'll now be experienced at month two. And then we subscri subtract the number of, um, which is 5%, of skilled technicians that quit during month one. Um, and this can be simplified into this equation and um, it's all written out nicely down here. So this is all the constraints I just explained. And um, let's go ahead and try to get the solution in Python. So next we need to put our parameters in. Let's see how much time I have, all right? Um, so let's just call this repair. This is our requirements again for skill repair time for each month. So let's see. 
should probably pull up this first page just so you can see the numbers I'm typing in, where I'm getting that from. Um, so then we need to do our problem variable. We don't have any other parameters. Use our LP problem function. Let's call this work schedule. And again, we are minimizing um, the cost of training and um, paying the skilled people. Now we need to set our decision variables. So we had, um, let's pull up this second page. We had try to zoom in a little. That was too much. So um, again, we had these, con I'm pretty sure they're, yeah, they're continuous uh, variables. And so we had, let's just call this x to keep it simple, underscore bears. We use our LP variable dot D-I-C-T-S. And we're going to call this train, because those are for our trainers during each month. We only have one set, and that's time. And our lower bound is zero. We don't need to type in our upper bound if there is none. Um, variable hopefully I'm not going too fast but I'm trying to keep this in one video um, so I called that technicians again we have uh, subscript is T which is our time periods and then our objective function not too difficult um, we are summing over the x's times the cost, so um, it says in the problem that the cost is a thousand per month, or a thousand um, to train someone for that month. So it's for each month. So we need to subscript i and do a loop for i in time so that it multiplies for each time period. And then we also need to sum over the cost for our experienced technicians. And that was 2000 and Again, I'm looking right here just in case you want to follow along with that. And um, we're going to use our y variable for i in time. And then next, going into our constraints. Let's see what the time is. Great. So, um, Constraint one, we have um, that our number of available technicians during a certain month is greater than or equal to the number that are the number required for that month. So we're just going to look down here, um, and since we have this parameter, um, we can do we can use a for all loop. So um, we see that it's for um, it's for i in time. That's our only set. Because you can see that um, as we go down um, the or down the column, the subscript increases. So we see that we're doing this for all months for both decision variables. So, or in other words, for all everything in our time set, or for all i, I guess you could call it. Um, oh, we are not summing over anything. So. All we need to write for this is 160, which is the number of hours available for skilled, I, and then and I'm literally just going by what it says already, 50 times x fares, and this needs to be greater than or equal to our repair parameter because we put in the uh, required hours already and we do need to index that of course um, because we have a different value for each month so then next we're gonna have a restraint for uh, constraint for each month and I'm probably gonna actually split this up even though I really didn't want to but I want this to be able to upload so let's just do two more constraints so our January constraint, 
Um, it's on our third page. So thankfully it's already written out and of course um, the only number we have for, um, sorry, kind of lost my train of thought. The only number of skill technicians that we start with is 50, so we don't have to do any special equation for that because there's no months before that. So it's just y varies 1 equals 50. And then going into February, prob plus equals. So for this, we need to look over here, and they simplified it for us. So we need to do 0 0.95 times y underscore bears 1 plus um, x bears 1. So you can basically see that um, the number of skilled technicians, um, we multiply by 0.95 because we know that 5% are going to quit and we add that to um, the number of people trained in month one because we know that in month two they will be skill considered skilled um, so this needs to equal y verse two which is the number of available skilled people um, at the beginning of month two and I'm gonna go ahead and stop here so check out part two of this video see the solution